Oh, hello there. I'm a 1950s doctor and I'm here to tell you that smoking is perfectly safe. Every doctor and scientist thinks so, so there's nothing to worry about. So this idea that you can't trust science because it's in industry's pocket is probably pretty familiar to anyone who's tried to have a nuanced conversation about a controversial issue like genetic engineering or vaccines or oil. I mean, I know it is. I've ran into this argument dozens of times on our Learn GMO Facebook page. And I wanted to make a video based on a great article that the Credible Hulk wrote back in 2015 about this issue of tobacco science. Now, he wrote about this topic really well and I'll include a link below in the description. So getting right into this, I found something pretty surprising right off the bat, and that was the fact that science-based consensus was never reached on the idea that cigarettes were safe. We've been told that 1950 scientists were collectively just sucking back the coffin nails and cashing the checks from Marlboro and lying to the whole world saying, no, 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 this stuff is safe, we promise. The reality is though that as far back as the 1930s, science had data showing a possible connection between lung cancer and smoking. There is even some documentation to this effect going back up to 250 years. There was never consensus on cigarettes being safe. Cool maybe, but never safe. Now today, when we look back at the way the tobacco industry tried to hide this knowledge from the public, it just seems so obvious considering science already knew smoking was dangerous. In fact, while the tobacco industry was busy trying to come up with alternate theories about increasing cancer rates among smokers, Independent research was still showing quite clearly that smoking wasn't a good idea. Contrary to what we've been told by anti-GMO lobbyists, the tobacco industry never really controlled the conclusions science drew and it never actually had scientific consensus on their side at all. In reality, the tobacco industry's main asset was clever PR and enough cash in the bank to pay the few scientists and doctors who were prepared to say good things about smoking. Even though the vast majority of science at that time was against them, those pro-tobacco scientists were the exception, not the rule. Now when we're talking about genetically engineered food, we're talking about a field of study that does have strong scientific consensus backing it up. Not only are there no credible studies showing GE food to have a negative impact on those consuming it, there is also zero evidence of any kind of tobacco-esque cover-up going on. You don't see scientists publishing papers offering alternative reasons for negative results, and you also don't see contradictions between the conclusions drawn through independent parties and those paid for by industry. And that's exactly what you'd expect to see if you were looking for a GMO cover-up. Actually, the only time we encounter evidence of shoddy science being practiced is when we look at the work of the anti-GMO lobby. Scientists like Seralini, who did the rat tumor study, or Senef, who's against glyphosate, or Carmen, who copied Seralini's format but with pigs instead. See, the media tends to find focus easily when talking about big bad biotech, but the organic industry is in fact much larger than any of the big biotech companies, $63 billion globally in 2015. The organic industry is well known for funding smear campaigns against GE, and that includes supporting bad science. Yet it's the supporters of the organic industry that accuse biotech companies of turning individual scientists and science journals into industry shills, even though there is zero evidence of this occurring. Now let's talk about Just Label It, the anti-GMO group that is hell-bent on getting all GMO food labeled. They've openly advertised for paid bloggers, who would argue their cause for a paycheck. So essentially there are bloggers out there being paid by an industry to call scientists chills? It doesn't make any sense and it can often go way too far as it did with the case of Mike Adams of Natural News when he publicly released a kill list of scientists and science advocates he characterized as Monsanto collaborators. So here's the question. Do you see similarities between the GMO organic situation and the smoking non-smoking situation? I see some parallels, but I draw them between the tobacco industry and the organic industry. Both are working against the consensus of science for reasons of profit. Cigarettes were never considered safe through scientific consensus. So if this tobacco science tactic is something you see frequently used to argue against GMOs, well, now you have the information you need to see who's really using tobacco science in that context. 
Shout out to Credible Hulk for writing an article that was really, really good and made me think about this. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. We'll see you next time.